Hey everyone, and welcome back to my darkroom. Today, we're developing a roll of black and white Kodak film for a friend of mine. Um, and while we're doing that, I thought it would be a good time to talk about the actual cost uh, involved with developing your own black and white film at home. So, we can dive right into that. Um, the first thing to talk about when you're developing your film at home, there's obviously a little bit of like a startup cost, let's say. Um, one of the biggest costs of that is the actual film tank itself. Um, in our darkroom, I use Patterson tanks, and there's a lot of different tanks, but Patterson tank works well for me. They have some of the nicer spools around. These ratcheting spools do really well for loading film. And also, like I've talked about before, they let you do 35 and 110. Or not 110, sorry, 120. So, nice and diverse. Um, as far as cost goes, uh, you can get a Patterson tank just like this for around $26 online. So that's one of the first costs associated. Um, the next cost would actually be the measuring cups that we use like this. Um, these are great for mixing my chemicals into before I develop them as well as measuring them out because they actually have all of the development lines on them. Or not the development lines, all of the measurement lines on them in millimeters. So that's actually pretty nice and then in the case of this I actually got a kit that has just about every conceivable size you need which works out great so you can obviously go cheaper on this a set of measuring cups like this is about eighteen dollars you could definitely go cheaper but I would highly suggest going with the good quality measuring cups and sticking with that um, one of the last initial startup costs that kind of goes along with developing your own film at home is you need to store your chemicals once you have them mixed. Uh, for me, we use one gallon <laughs> jugs, which are just these data liner bottles, and then they make a one liter one as well. So, pretty simple stuff. Uh, once again, I've seen people use one and two liter bottles to store their chemicals, but uh, I think the cost on a one liter bottle is around three dollars and then the cost on a one gallon bottle here is like eight dollars and these are great for film because well film chemicals they're actually light tight uh, really cut down on the chemicals themselves going bad whereas if you had like a clear bottle or something like that you have light getting through to it that's actually gonna work on the chemicals and make them kind of expire a lot quicker so that's another one of those initial setup costs that you could definitely go cheaper on. But in the case of these, uh, it's, let's see, if we do one one-gallon bottle, and then what I use are five one-liter bottles, because that's about what it takes to hold a full fresh mix of uh, your developer. So, I mean, uh, you're looking at like another $27 just in bottles. Obviously, you could go cheaper, but... For our setup, this is what we run. So what that does is puts us at a total startup cost of $72.40. Um, and that's without chemicals, but that'll be the next thing we talk about here. So while we get this stirred up, the first thing you're going to need as far as chemicals go is a developer. Um, what I use is the Kodak x -Tol. This comes in a powdered mix. There's two bags. And then when you're ready to mix it, you pour the two contents together and you mix it in with five liters of water. And then you have a mix that's good for at least six months up to a year if you store it right. Once again, that kind of comes into talking about using, you know, a nice quality bottle. Um, and then you'll also notice on these bottles, this one looks kind of caved in. Um, once you're done using your chemicals, it's always good to squeeze out all the air because air is the number one factor for making your chemicals go bad. So the reason it looks like this, squeeze so the air doesn't get to it. Um, back to this though, uh, x -Tol powder developer. Um, a bag set up like this that gives you five liters only costs $9.95. And like I said, last six months, um, usually you can get, I think they say around 50 rolls out of it, out of one bag. So that's pretty good. Um, so that's your x -Tol, that's your developer. The next thing you're going to need is a fixer. Um, what we use here is photographer's, form photographer's formularity fixer, and this is a TF5 archive fixer. Um, 
really works well, does good for hardening the film, and makes it really good to uh, scan it and print with. So uh, a bottle of this is only $3.95, and it's a one liter solution, and you actually mix it in. So I believe one liter gives you one gallon of stock. So once again, just like the uh, developer, the fixer also works in to be, well, five liters, or in this case, you get about a gallon. So that's pretty easy. Then the last thing that we use as far as chemicals for developing is PhotoFlow. And this is just kind of a wetting agent. It helps for the film to dry without spots. Think of it as a spot-free rinse for your film. So a bottle of this, I mean, this is the original bottle I got when I started developing years ago. And a bottle of this costs a whole $8.00. So really good price, really does it good for making sure your film dries without water spots on it. So you can take all this. And so what I'm talking about is, you know, the cost of this stuff is bulk product. Um, if we break that down and say, okay, how many rolls of film are we going to be able to develop off of just that one batch of chemicals? Um, when I calculated this out, I said, okay, I mean, if you run this, you'll get maybe 50 rolls to 80 rolls <laughs> out of one set of chemicals. Um, if you're doing 120 film, it's a little less, say, like maybe 30 to 80 rolls, somewhere in there. It all depends on how you mix that out. So if you break that down, basically what it comes out to is about, let's say, 38 cents is what I came up with to develop a roll of 35 millimeter film if you count in your chemicals and then divide that over 50 rolls. Um, the same thing with 120, if you take that and divide it over say the 30 rolls that you should get out of 5 liters of working chemical, you come up with 52 cents. So really if we talk about what it costs to develop black and white film, if you're looking at just the chemical cost, it's 38 cents, 52 cents depending on what kind of a roll you're doing, whether it's 35 millimeter or 120. Um, then we get into that initial setup cost. We need to kind of take that and divide it by those 50 rolls too. So if you take that 7240 and divide it by 50, you come up with, uh, what did I write down there? Uh, about a buck 45 a roll if you take and divide your initial startup costs. So in the case of that, if we look at that uh, cost of chemical, plus that initial startup cost. I mean, you're looking at uh, $1.83 a roll to develop 35 millimeter black and white film, or if you're doing 27, or sorry, if you're doing 120 film, you're looking at $1.97. So really a good way to call this would be, it's about $2 to develop your own roll at home, whether it's 35 millimeter or 120 film. So that's not a very bad cost at all. Um, so that's for black and white film. While we talk about it, uh, there's ways to develop color film at home. In fact, one of those ways is right here. I have a color C41 kit. Uh, a kit like this runs about $20, and they claim you can get at least eight rolls out of it. So if you take that, you know, $20 divided by eight, you end up with about $250 a roll, which is not that bad of a price. So. <laughs> Really, when it comes to developing your own film at home, way better prices than taking it to um, a place that still even develops film. Hopefully, if you can find a nice place that does it locally, a lot of places, you know, you're shipping it out and you're waiting. So, you know, if you think about the cost of developing film in a store and then the fact of also waiting um, with me, I can shoot a roll of film, come home here, and, you know, develop it in an evening. So, I think there's a pretty good price point as well as just a time factor of doing it on your time and not having to wait for um, a store to develop your film and return it back to you, especially if they're shipping it out to have it developed somewhere else or off-site. So, I mean, that's a lot of things to think about. Like I said, I'm seeing, hey, $2 a roll, but as I said before with that initial startup cost, you could easily cut out the cost of your measuring and your storage containers if you wanted to. Um, and then again, same thing, I talked about the price of a Patterson tank being $26.75, but there are cheaper tanks out there. I mean, I have one of them right here. This is a single real stainless steel tank that I actually got from a garage sale. I mean, you talk about cheap, I think that was maybe a couple dollars. 
Um, once again, though, it's all about the usability. Uh, a Patterson tank is a lot easier to load and a lot easier to work with than, say, a steel reel tank. So uh, it's one of those things where you get what you pay for. Uh, and I don't mind going with the nicer tanks with the nicer measuring cups and the nicer storage bottles just because it makes working down in my dark room that much easier. But uh, like I said, hopefully that answers any questions. Like I said, a lot of questions I get is, man, how much does it cost? Is it more expensive to develop your film at home? Is it less? Um, going on the record to say it's definitely less to develop your own film at home. So hopefully that answers any questions. Uh, another thing I'd like to do in the future would be talking a little bit more about the cost of color film. I think we touched on it briefly, but hopefully in the future we'll be using that kit and seeing how well it works while we develop some color film that we have. Uh, for now though, I'm about up on time here, so we're going to pour off this developer, put in our stop, backs, stop bath, and then uh, go on to our fixer. And uh, at the end of this, we'll uh, show you how our friend's film turned out. All right, so we've done our stop bath, and now we're on to our fixer for six minutes, and that's counting down. Um, so we talked about the cost of developing film. Um, obviously, there's some other costs tied into that besides what we just talked about. Uh, one of the other costs is a lot of times if you're developing your own film, uh, you're either going to print it on an enlarger, which I have sitting over to the right of me here, or in most cases, um, I scan in my film, so then you're talking about having a film scanner, which is a little different than a normal scanner. You actually have light over the top of the scanning bed, so you can shine through the film to get a good scan. Um, and a good scanner will cost, you know, two, three hundred dollars. I picked up a used scanner from a friend of mine who also does photography, and it's an Epson. It's worked out very well. But that's one of those things where, you know, we talk about, okay, it's $2 a roll to develop your own film, but if you don't have a scanner or an enlarger, well, your film's not going to really go anywhere um, unless you have a friend <laughs> with an enlarger or a scanner. So, you know, there's kind of another cost there, too. Um, and obviously there's a lot of little costs for things uh, like gloves. I didn't talk about the cost of gloves or the cost of other kind of consumables like that. Uh, you know, the cost of the actual roll of film factors into this, you know, that's the cost to develop it. But hey, I mean, if it's, you know, four or five dollars for a roll of film, eh, that's a cost in itself, too. But those are things that, you know, if you're paying someone to develop your film, you're having to buy your own film. And also, if, you know, you're buying your own film, you're possibly also scanning it yourself, too. Or, in most cases, if you're having someone develop it at a store, they're also scanning it in for you. Um, depending on what kind of a store you go to, the actual resolution of those scans might be more or less than you can achieve at home with a decent, you know, priced scanner like mine. So, those are all costs to talk about, too, or to think about. But, for the most part, it's really low cost to get into developing your own film. Um, really, the biggest thing for some people is going to be the space. Obviously I have my own dark room set up here and I have this room to run this all, not only just developing film but also enlarging on the enlarger. Um, you, you need access to water so that's trouble for a lot of people. Eh, you need a room that can also be completely dark which is usually a lot of people don't have that but the best place to do this all talking about having a water supply, talking about keeping it relatively dark, um, your bathroom. Bathroom has great access to water. Usually bathrooms only have one tiny window, which is very easy to block off. So for a lot of people thinking about developing film at home, the best thing you can do is set up your dark room in your bathtub or in your actual bathroom. And that's one of the best ways or the best places to kind of start. Uh, that's how I started. I didn't always have a nice setup down in my basement for developing film. I started like a lot of other people doing it in my bathroom in the dark at my bathroom sink and then basically developing prints in the tub. So you know really the barrier to entry is really low there. Um, I really you know challenge people to try to get out there and develop their own film. You know we talk about that. Really the biggest investment is in that initial setup and that cost of chemicals but if you're someone who's going to be shooting a lot of film, you could actually end up saving yourself money if you're developing, you know, 30, 40 rolls of film. 
think about the savings versus two dollars a roll versus whatever you're gonna actually pay to have a store develop it um, something to think about so hopefully like I said this was an informative video uh, look forward to me hopefully doing more stuff like this like I said we had some color film coming we have some weird film sizes coming uh, so it'll be great to see what we can do in the future all right so we got our film done now and man it looks like it turned out really well Let's see if I can get get this all pulled off Let's see if we can get some views of it here there we go yeah looks like it turned out nice nice even frames I actually lent this film and a camera to a friend it was actually uh, my Minolta rangefinder lent it to him just to kind of try out figure out what he liked uh, for film cameras before he actually got his own so yeah it looks good and these turned out pretty well um, little bit of fogging on the film you can actually see on the edges here there we go towards the end here it's a little fogged um, I think he had some issues with the camera um, got a little bit of it exposed to light and you can see that as it wears on here kinda of toward the end there you can see how the actual side sprockets are a little darker than they should be meaning that they got exposed to a little bit of light like you can tell here, here's your end leader that you put in as you develop, and you can see that that's, or sorry, you put it in as you load the camera. You can see that's full dark. Um, and then as you go through the roll here, obviously the frames that were developed are dark, but then you should see light kind of on your sprockets there. Uh, and you can see, <laughs> see if I can get a little closer here. There we go. Yeah, you can see that you get a little bit of darkening toward this edge and then you can see obviously a lot of darkening on this top edge uh, it just means that you know the film got overexposed a little bit by the camera back being opened or in the case of this uh, when I was loading this in <laughs> it was actually thought it was in the wrong canister and opened the canister that this was in pretty bad mistake but this film has a lot of uh, it's got a lot of push to it, so even if part of it gets exposed, you can tell it doesn't really affect it too much. You can kind of see here, <laughs> this is what caught the brunt of it. You can kind of see where it just drops off. Um, for the most part, though, even with this film having some partial um, exposure, it still turned out really well. Probably actually lead to some really interesting images. So uh, I'm going to dry this off and get it hung up, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.